This video presents the highlights from a full-day BPA, training on indoor air quality and how to test an exhaust fan in the Umatilla Electric Territory. Trainings and workshops like this one are free and available to participating contractors. Indoor air quality is an important and often overlooked component of building science. During the training, the team learned the effects of bad air quality in the home, how to calculate how much ventilation a home needs according to the ASHRAE standards, and how to test exhaust fans for effectiveness. There's three major categories for mechanical ventilation. The first two um, are the simplest and the most cost-effective, but there's disadvantages to them. We'll get into those in a second. The second uh, category is what we were just talking outside, uh, HRVs, ERVs. But what an ERV does that an HRV doesn't is uh, you're able to recover um, humidity in the air, especially in a dry climate like this. When you're exhausting that warm, stale, humidified air in a desert environment, from breathing, showering, cooking, 50% humidity is best. It's most ideal for human health and uh, way too low humidity. Anything below about 30, 35, and you invite as many problems, maybe not the more famous ones like mold, but you have a ton of problems when you get below 30, 35% um, that affect human health as well. So again, maintaining that, uh, super important. Outdoor air is most oftentimes way better than indoor air. Indoor air, the, the basic numbers is two to five times worse than outdoor air. Sometimes up to a hundred times worse, just depends on what's going on. But outdoor air is not perfect. Going back to the, the first two, the most cost effective. You've got exhaust only ventilation. We've been talking a lot about this. Um, the primary examples are gonna be bathroom fans, kitchen fans, laundry room fans, uh, blower doors, right? <laughs> um, and then the second category is uh, supply side only. While not a perfect solution, when calculated correctly, they can have a positive effect on the home's air quality. actually show you how to quantify how much air that's really pulling. Uh, it's not just meant for privacy and making noise while you're going to the bathroom. It's meant to move air. That's its number one job. Okay, go ahead, move 4.5. Look here, minus, again, I'm on E2. So you find your pressure, 4.4, E2. What did you say the first time? 45. 45? There you go, right? But now that you've done your job and air sealed all your penetrations, you've got you know 15 inches of loose fill fiberglass, the air beyond that is so much more colder now because it's no longer participating with the heat gain or heat loss from the space. So your warm, moist air from an hour-long shower, it goes up that fan and on that hard pipe. Always good to use hard pipe, not flex pipe, because it's, it's uh, friction, right? static pressure. Um, insulate that to keep that air warm so that that vapor doesn't hit a cold surface on the wall and say it's a long duct run, a little quick elbow before it desiccates out, commentates out, runs right back to the fan. And all of a sudden you got a big pool of water inside that and the thing shorts out. By using the Red Cald online tool, the team was able to calculate how much total ventilation is required. When possible, it is recommended that a balanced ventilation system be installed. Comfort Ready Home also recommends filtering and monitoring indoor air consistently with proper ventilation. To learn more, head over to comfortreadyhome.com or email info at comfortreadyhome.com. Don't forget to check out the other videos in this series on additional topics.